Hello everyone, I'm Anita Wallace, I'm Chair of the Lymphedema Support Network and I'm delighted to introduce you to Professor Dominic Furness, a microsurgeon with a special interest in lymphedema. But first Dominic, can you tell me from your surgeon's point of view, what is lymphedema? Thanks, Anita, and thanks very much for inviting me. I'm just going to start with a couple of little videos, if that's all right. I'm just going to share my screen and just give everyone a little background into how I think about lymphedema from a surgeon's point of view. So these videos are just from YouTube. Uh, they're very easy to, to get hold of if you want to watch them at your leisure. Um, so this first one, which I hope you can see now on the screen, this gives us an idea about the lymphatic system as a whole. So it's a series of interconnected tubes underneath the skin. And what happens when you think about a limb, an arm or a leg, you've got arteries bringing blood into the limb, and then you've got veins taking blood out of the limb. And in between the two, the blood flows through these tiny capillaries here. So these are absolutely microscopic. And as the blood's flowing through those capillaries, what happens is some of the fluid from the blood leaks out and it leaks out to bathe your cells and, and keep your tissues alive, really. And most of that fluid gets taken up by the veins again and carries on back to your heart. But through the course of a day, about three litres of that fluid gets left behind in the tissues all over your body. And what the lymphatic system does is it takes that fluid from the tissues and gets it back into the circulation again. So the fluid has come from the circulation and it's trying to get back into the circulation. So the lymphatic system also has these tiny little capillaries which are colored here in purple and it sucks the fluid up and it pumps it along in a really active mechanism. So there are muscle cells in the walls of the lymphatics that pump the fluid along, a little bit like your gut pumps your food along without you even thinking about it. And the fluid eventually gets to these things called lymph glands or lymph nodes. And these lymph glands are stuffed full of immune cells that you can see here. And they help you to respond to infection. So everyone will be familiar with when you've got a cold, some of your glands come up in your neck and that's these lymph nodes getting bigger to help you fight infection. They're also really good at catching cancer cells. So that's why very often in cancer treatment, surgeons or oncologists or radiotherapists will treat lymph nodes as well. And there's one other thing to notice here. You'll see that um, in the video, in the illustration here, they put these little pinch points on the lymphatics and they're representing on the inside these one-way valves. So what happens here is if there is contraction beyond one of these one-way valves and the fluid tries to go back in the wrong direction, the valve will just close. And that means that in the normal circumstance, the lymphatic flow is all in one direction. And as we'll see, that, that changes in lymphedema. So the fluid passes through these lymph nodes and fluid from your leg, for example, goes through your pelvis, through the back of your tummy, through the back of your chest, and then it gets back into the circulation here, really deep down inside your neck into one of the main veins going directly back to your heart. So the normal fluid has come from the circulation and it gets back into the circulation via the lymphatic system. So what goes wrong with that in lymphedema? Um, so I'm just gonna share another uh, video if that's okay. And this video is made by uh, one of our colleagues in Barcelona, Jaume Mazia, who some of you will have heard of. And it shows an arm, but this could just as well be a leg or anywhere else on the body. And this gives us a more 3D view of what's going on. So here at the top, we have the skin. And down below, we have the muscles and nerves and all the important structures in the limb. And in between the two, we have this layer, which is usually full of subcutaneous fat. So this is the subcutaneous layer, which we have all over our body. And here they've colored the arteries in red, the veins in blue and the lymphatics in this sort of yellowy greeny color. And as we look at this in a, 
in a sort of more 3D way, I like to think of this a bit like a forest of trees. So you have the tiny little twigs at the end of the branches, and these are the lymphatic capillaries. And they're the ones that are picking up the fluid from the tissues. And then they pass it down to bigger and bigger branches and eventually down the trunks. And eventually the fluid gets to these um, lymphatics here, which are a little bit like rivers running through the forest almost, this network of lymphatics. And they're the ones that we were looking at in the other video. And just to give you an idea of size, these are about half a millimeter or so in diameter. So you can imagine how absolutely microscopic those little capillaries are. And what we'll see as we just follow this video through is another illustration of uh, the capillaries picking up the fluid from the tissues. You'll see as we go down, they've again put the little pinch points on representing those one-way valves. So this flow is all in one direction. As we go inside, you'll see fluid coming downwards, but none of it going up in the wrong direction. And then as we come out, you'll see they've illustrated the lymphatics actually pumping. So this is an active mechanism. There's lots of uh, muscles in the walls uh, and they are pumping the fluid along. So with lymphedema, what we find is there is a blockage somewhere foot higher up in the system. So very often people will have secondary lymphedema. And what's happened there is usually a surgeon or a radiotherapist has treated lymph nodes very often for cancer. And this causes scarring and fibrosis and a blockage higher up in the system. So the fluid is it's pumped up towards that blockage, but then much like a, a log jam in a river or um, you know, cars getting stuck behind an accident on a motorway, the, the fluid starts to build up and build up. And as it builds up, what it does is it causes those little lymphatics to dilate. So they get blown up like a balloon. And when that happens, those little one-way valves that used to meet in the middle, they get pushed apart. So they no longer meet in the middle. And we can now have fluid going in the wrong direction in the lymphatics and actually going all the way back and spilling out into the tissues again. And that really is what lymphedema is all about. But there's one other thing that's important as well in lymphedema. And that is that the fluid itself, it's not just water. It's got growth factors and inflammatory factors in the fluid and proteins. And this causes the fat cells in that uh, layer in between the skin and, and all the muscles and the important structures, it causes those fat cells to grow. And that happens at very different rates between different people. And uh, many of you will have heard of pitting edema, and that's where there is mostly fluid in the arm or the leg, and non-pitting edema, and that's where the fat overgrowth has become more uh, predominant. And as hopefully you'll, you'll hear about in other videos, the treatment of these different types of lymphedema um, is, is very different. Thank you, Dominic. That was really interesting. Thank you.